This morning, did I? But let's gather back in, and we're going to have uh, just maybe a couple of verses of one song, and then I'm going to have my brother from Indiana come over. What's your first name again? Tony? Tony, I apologize, but you get used to it, because I, I don't even know where I'm at half the time. Old boy said, I'm here because I ain't all there, and when I get there, I ain't there because I, 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 I don't know where I'm at because I ain't here. All righty. What babies are singing? Number 19, saved, saved, number 19. One more time, let's rise up and sing to our Lord today and praise Him and thank Him that we're saved, we're saved. Let's sing that out this morning, number 19. My life is now sweet and my joy is complete because I'm saved. I found a friend. singing bunch you can be seated and enjoy yourself there man that's good singing now you know the difference between singing and singing don't you you was a singing but now you're singing hey man well this brother tony's going to come over here and i don't know what he's going to tell you but i just like him he's just going to give you a testimony and uh, pray for his wife she had a what, knee surgery but it was about four weeks ago and and he drug her off down here, and uh, it's not the easiest thing for her. But anyway, you just give a testimony of God's grace toward you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, God has been very gracious to me. Uh, I'm one of those uh, that grew up in church, but it wasn't a church that uh, really taught me anything. I mean, I got baptized, and I don't even remember getting down on my knees whenever I was a kid, and they said I saved. Then I went through my teenage years, and he got a lot worse, Reggie. And uh, I know my Bible says that when the blood of Jesus saves us, it don't just cover, it cleanses. 
it cleanses. It's not like in the Old Testament sacrifices. That blood just covered the sins. We're cleansed until the day of redemption. And I'm so thankful and praise God for that. And uh, God is good. And uh, I just am so impressed to the young people. And I can see the love in their hearts and their parents that love them. And uh, I tried. I've been failed at about everything I've done except for accepting Christ. And uh, I praise God that I can continue in that. And, and there's folks out here that I can come to and seek guidance in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you, Mark. I pray what? Give him a good hand just for coming and being with us and being an encouragement to us this week. And um, we're going to get Brother Brad up here. Come on up here, Bradley. This guy right here, he's got a twin brother. And if his twin brother was here and he jumped over that back and his brother stepped in, you wouldn't know the difference. I mean, there, I get you would, but we wouldn't probably. But I've known this, uh, this guy here was hatched out of Mike Hoggard's church up there, kind of, right? And boy, I tell you what, uh, he's had quite a trail of journey of faith. Uh, I'm not, he may get into it some, but he's, uh, you're one time we're in Jehovah Witnesses, that you're Mormon. He was uh, at one time in Mormonism. And uh, the journey of faith God took this boy on is something else. So don't give up on people. And now, it, and he got saved him, and he called him to preach. And he's pastoring a church out now in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, right? And I'll tell you what, I, I kind of watch him. He's got a heart for souls. He's training the people how to reach people for Christ. He's got a burden for the Lord out there. And that's what we need across America is pastors and preachers who will go into a town and say, you know what? By God's grace, we're going to make a difference here. And we're going to at least give people the gospel and hold up the banner of the cross. And that's what this young man is doing. He's been a, a blessing to me. And I want you to listen to him while he preaches today. God bless you, Brother Brad. I love you. How about that? There we go. Right, give him the juice, boy. That Amen. Don't they wonder they can hear him I don't hardly use one of these things. I so let me see if I can get this on right. All right, there we go. I feel like an astronaut ready to take off. <laughs> so we I do want you to take your Bibles this morning to the book of Acts, Acts chapter number one. Acts chapter number one. And uh, we are beyond grateful for this privilege, and uh, it really is an honor and privilege to be here this morning and to be amongst the people of God. And uh, I am enjoying myself in the Lord. And this church is an absolute blessing. Uh, every pastor needs a pastor. And uh, I've got a Mount Rushmore of men in my life don't just have one because if you just have one their weakness will become your weaknesses but you have a Mount Rushmore of men and uh, your pastor is on that Mount uh, of Rushmore men and uh, the Corinthians had many instructors Paul said not many fathers and uh, your pastor has been a spiritual mentor in my life Got saved under Brother Mike Hoggard's ministry and church and just right away called to preach. And I cut spiritual teeth on some of the greatest preaching in this country. Still, still today. Been preaching now for 16 years. And uh, I tune in and about just every week to listen to my pastor. And I love you, Brother Reg. You mean the world to me and I love... What God is doing here, and yes, 
the young people in this church that is just an absolute blessing and a half and uh, we're thankful for you uh, Acts chapter number one is where I want to be at this morning and uh, we're going to read verses 9 through 12 and uh, I want us to stand for the reading of God's word this morning Acts chapter number one beginning in verse number nine the Bible says and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. I want to preach for a few minutes this morning on the second coming mountain. The second coming mountain. Father, we're thankful for this privilege. Lord, we're thankful for the blessing to be able to preach thy holy word. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for what you've already done in my heart and life this morning through the, the drive and through the prayer time and just meditating. And Lord, thank you for getting me here safe. And uh, Lord, I thank you for what you've done in my life and uh, the lives uh, of this service today and the other preachers and the singing. Lord, it's done me real good. And Lord, I thank you for what you've done already. Lord, I ask now that you anoint me with fresh oil. Father, I pray you touch me, Lord. I pray, God, you'd use me. Lord, I ask, dear God, that you put a guard on my mouth that, it might, that I might not say my words. But, Lord, you'd open my mouth and fill it with thy words. God, we're thankful for the word of God. And, God, we're thankful to you, the God of the word. Lord, use us now, and I pray that you give ears to hear. Lord, if somebody is here this morning, unsaved, undone, never experienced a new birth, I pray God today would be the day of salvation. Lord, I pray you convict their heart. And Lord, I pray you'd bring them to a saving faith. And Lord, I pray you'd stir each saint of God up, Lord. And we're going to thank you now for what you do in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So many people live in life's valleys. Every now and then it helps to climb a mountain. Uh, just a month or so ago, we went to Pigeon Forge on a family trip and went to the Smoky Mountains. And I tell you, that's the third time I've been and I like the mountains. And uh, so many great events in the Bible took place on a mountain. It was on old Mount uh, Horeb that we hear theology when God said, I am that I am. It was on another mountain that we see some Christology as we see the deity and the humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ in that event called the Transfiguration. It was on Mount Moriah, though, that we understand a little bit about soteriology as we see Israel uh, saved on the basis of a substitute lamb. But it is here in our text this morning at the Mount of Olives that we get some eschatology as the Lord lays out details about his return. According to the word of God, Jesus will come to the Mount of Olives when he returns to this earth. Zechariah 14 verse number 4 says that he shall stand at that day upon the Mount of Olives and it shall cleave. And, and uh, I just want to ask all the uh, full preterists and the partial preterists and all those who think everything's already been done and passed away. Uh, what about that mountain? Yes, and uh, it's, it's not uh, been fulfilled like Zechariah said. And it's from the mountain, this mountain of olives, that Jesus ascended back to heaven. And as Jesus speaks words of majesty, he went back to glory. And the Bible says here, a cloud received him. And literally a cloud came under Jesus, received him, and carried him away. And the Bible says, Psalm 104, 3, says that the clouds are his chariot. Boy, don't we got an amazing God this morning. Right before the disciples' eyes, the Lord Jesus ascended back. Back to heaven. What a day. I want you to think about what a day that must have been uh, here that we've read this morning. I want you to notice what happened on this Mount of Olives. The Bible says two men came and stood with these disciples as he was ascending. I personally believe they were angels because of their apparel and because of their announcement. These two men were good news angels. And notice the good news that the angels spake. They said this same Jesus who's taken up from you into heaven might shall 
come in like manner as you've seen them go into heaven. The best news that this old weary world could hear today is that Jesus is coming again. This is the one ray of hope in our dark world. Christ's second coming is the divine event toward which all of history is moving toward. It was on this mountain that we uh, want you to focus with me this morning. We call this the we just call this the second coming mountain that we hear the good news of eschatology of the Lord's return. And I want to lay before you quickly three observations. I want to give you three observations uh, about this second coming mountain. As we all climb this second coming mountain today in the passage, I want you to notice that a second coming service is about a person. It's about a person. The Bible says in verse number 9, if you look with it again with me, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he, who's he? Well, it's Jesus, amen. He was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he, Jesus, went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus. These disciples were looking at Jesus according to verse number 9. This was not a fleeting look. This was a steady gaze. And we need to be looking at Jesus more in this day. We need to be looking and focusing our attention upon the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but my Christian life and journey, and uh, it all began with a look one day. I'm telling you, I've seen the Lord Jesus Christ lifted up and on the cross of Calvary. I've seen him with the eye of faith. My Christian life began with a look. Look unto me and be ye saved, all ye ends of the earth. But you know, when you get saved, that's not when you need to stop looking at Jesus. The Christian life not only begins with a look, but the Christian life is to continue with a look. And one of these glorious days, the Christian life's going to end with a look as we shall see him as he is. So we know we're going to see him one day as he is. And if you're saved, you've already seen him before. But now, even right now in your Christian life, you ought to be continuing to look at Jesus. Don't get over him. He's not only the foundation of our faith, but he ought to be the focus of our faith. And so I want you to notice in verse number 11, the Bible says this same Jesus. When I read that verse, I couldn't but help go back to Hebrews, the 13th chapter and verse number eight, where the Bible says that this same Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hey, that's just another way of saying that Jesus is a past Jesus, but Jesus is also a present Jesus and he's a perennial Jesus and so Jesus is the past Jesus who has changed history like no other I'm telling you if you really want to just summarize the Bible in a three statements about Jesus here it is he is coming was the message of the Old Testament the New Testament says he has come and it also declares that he is coming the whole Bible is wrapped up in those three statements. And, and I'm telling you, he's the past Jesus. He changed history. He commenced history when he created everything out of nothing. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And all things were created by him and through him. And there was not anything that was made that was not made by Jesus. Hey, he commenced history, did he not? I'm going to tell you what, he not only commenced history, but the past Jesus also changed history, didn't he? He changed history with the incarnation, didn't he? He changed history when he was virgin born. We still got a church that believes in the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he was born like none other. Amen. I'm telling you, he changed history by his virgin birth. He changed history by his virtuous life. The Bible says that he went about seeking, uh, he went about doing good. And, and, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Hey, Jesus changed history by his incarnation, his virgin birth, but his virtuous life. He lived a sinless, perfect, righteous, spotless life that you and I could not live. I'm thankful for his virtuous life that he did no sin and without he was without sin and he's holy and he's undefiled. But he not only changed history by his virgin birth, he not only changed history by his virtuous life, but ain't you glad that he went to the cross of Calvary? And he changed history by his vicarious death when he died on the old rugged cross as my substitute, as your substitute. And he changed history at the cross, didn't he? But that's not where it ended. 
He changed history through the victorious resurrection. He rose. He rose. He arose. Three days later, he came up out of the grave. And he said, the angel said, he's not here. For he is risen as he said. Aren't you glad that the grave is still empty this morning? And Christ is risen. And without the resurrection, we're all without hope this morning. But one of these days, he's going to change history. By his victorious return. He is. He's Lord. Amen. I want to tell you what. Jesus. He's the past Jesus. But I'm glad he's the present Jesus. He's not the God who was. He's the God who is. He is the I am, not the I was. Amen. And I'm talking about the present Jesus. He not only the past Jesus changes history, but the present Jesus changes lives, doesn't he? I'm glad Jesus still saves in 2023. Jesus still saves. The Lord's hands not shortened that it cannot save. Amen. He still saves. He still sanctifies. And I'm glad he still satisfies. You don't need no old liquor bottle. And you don't need no joint. And you don't need all the things of this world. The substitutes of the devil. Jesus still satisfies. Amen. And I'm talking about that present Jesus. Yes, he's the past Jesus. He's a, a present Jesus. But I want to spend most of the rest of my time here on the perennial Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hey, I'm telling you, Jesus was historical. He's personal in my life. But he's eternal. He's always going to be. There's not going to be nobody to dethrone him. Amen. So as you and I so far this morning, as we've climbed the second coming mountain, we see that a second coming service here is about a person. Secondly, not only do we see a person in the text, but we hear a promise in the text. I want you to notice in verse number 11. The Bible says, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Here's the promise, the same Jesus, that's the person, which is taken up from you into heaven. Here's the promise, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. <laughs> hey, this is a promise, isn't it? And I'm going to tell you, there is comfort in this promise this morning. I'm telling you, it is not a new promise because the Old Testament prophesied that the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. That's what Zechariah said. Jude, verse number 14, says that Enoch prophesied. Hey, he was a preacher of righteousness and he preached that the Lord is going to come with ten thousands of his saints. This is not a new promise that the angels are given here but it is a promise that has great comfort in it, in it, in it right now. Is that right? Hey I'll tell you what I, I know that this church has your eschatology right. I'm pretty sure of that and uh, I'm glad that the Lord's coming for his saints and then later he's coming with his saints. I'm telling you what, I'm so pre-millennial, I won't eat post-trip cereal. <laughs> amen. I won't eat post-cereal. I'm pre-millennial, amen. I'm just, this place ain't this world, this country, this nation, this world not going to get any better before he comes. It'll get better after he comes. I believe in the pre-millennial second coming of Jesus Christ. I'm so pre-trib that I won't say, ah, when I go to the doctor. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he comes for his saints in the rapture and he comes with his saints in the revelation. And I'm telling you this, listen, this is a literal promise here. I get married in a hornet when people try to spiritualize and twist and, and make this some figurative and some, hey, this is a literal return of Jesus Christ. It's visible. It's literal. It's physical. Behold. The Lord, the Revelation 1, 7 says that he comes with clouds. Amen. And every eye shall see him. Yeah, that twin brother of mine, he was, he was deceived in that J-Dub stuff. They believe he came back in 1914. Ain't that crazy? I'm serious. I don't believe that for one bit from the word of God. Let me tell you something. Why this promise is a literal promise, a literal return to do away with the literal second coming of Jesus is to do away with the literal ascension. Yes, sir. 
To do away with the literal second coming of Christ is not only to do away with the literal ascension, but it is to do away with the literal resurrection. Yes, to do away with the second coming of Christ not only gets rid of the literal ascension and the literal resurrection, but it gets rid of the literal substitution and the cross of Calvary. It gets rid of the virgin birth. You cannot not believe in a literal return of Jesus Christ. The Bible says he will return as the same person. Notice it said this same Jesus. Not one among many. Not the Jesus of liberalism. Not the Jesus of modernism. Not the Jesus of pluralism. Hey, it says this same Jesus. He's coming back as the same person. He will return for the same people. That day, whenever he ascended, he ascended and made a promise to the believers. And when he comes back, he's coming for his bride. He's coming for his people. He said in John 14, he said, if I go away, I will come again. And he said that where I am, there ye may be also. And he said that I may receive you unto myself. He's coming back for the church in the rapture. And then I'm telling you, we'll be caught up. I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to the rapture. He's going to catch me up. And then, yes, I'll have to go through the judgment seat of Christ and, and he'll clean me up. Amen. And then I'll go through the marriage supper of the Lamb and he'll cheer me up. Amen. And I'm telling you, this is all literal. Don't try to make this spiritual. Amen. I'm telling you, he will return for the same people. We will go up to heaven either by the resurrection or by the rapture. Now, if my wife was here and you'd ask her how I sing, she would not say very good. But one of these days, I'm going to sing real good. And one of these days, I'm going to sing a duet. 1 Corinthians 15 gives you, I'm telling you, 1 Corinthians 15, 55 gives you the duet that we're going to sing. It says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Those that are living will say, O death, where is thy sting in the rapture? Those that are resurrected in the first resurrection will say, oh, great, where's thy victory? I'm telling you, he's coming back for the same people that he left, the church. He'll also return to the same place. They're in Jerusalem. He's going to return. Notice, he says here, it says that he shall so come in like manner as he have seen him go into heaven. We already know based on Zechariah 14 that he's going to come back to the Mount of Olives. It's going to cleave. He's going to come back to the same place. So friends, as we have climbed this second coming mountain, and we've experienced a second coming service, we see a person. Same Jesus. We hear a promise. He shall so come in like manner. But you know what? Look at verse 10 with me. The Bible says here in verse number 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Which also said, ye men of Galilee. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Well, we would say, well, we would too. Amen. <laughs> but as we climb this second coming mountain, we leave with a purpose. We leave with a purpose. The return of Jesus Christ, his second coming and the blessed hope, which we understand is two different things. But boy, they give a plan in our lives, don't they? You see, this promise here is not only a comforting promise, but it's a challenging promise. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? You see, the Bible says that we as his church are to wait for his son from heaven. But we're not just to wait and do nothing. While we're looking for the blessed hope. And let me remind you, I do not believe that the, the New Testament church and the bride and the, and the body of Christ was looking for signs. They were looking for the Savior. Yes, From whence we look, yep. right? But while we're waiting and looking, we have a purpose in this life. And we're to be working. 
We're to be laboring for Him. I want you to quickly go over to 2 Peter chapter number 3, and I'll be done here. 2 Peter chapter number 3. I want you to notice with me in verses 10 through 18. 2 Peter chapter number 3. We leave with a purpose from this second coming mountain. In Second Corinthians, or Second Peter, rather, three in verse number ten, the Bible says, "But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night." In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking, see, there it is, for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Notice there he said hasting unto the coming of the day of God. How do you hasten the day of God? Well, the Bible is clear that as we labor and we win people to Christ and we work for Him, one of these days the, the Gentiles will be completed in the body of Christ. The, the church will be completed and the rapture will take place. And then it says that this gospel shall be preached in all the world during uh, tribulation. And, and, uh, and then it says, in the end shall come, you see. You and I, while we're waiting and looking, would be laboring. Would it be working? Did not Jesus say, occupy till I come? I tell you what, these people that tell you that Christ is going to come back at such and such time, they try to pinpoint the day and the hour and the moment and all that. I mean, that's silly, isn't it? I mean, the Bible says that no man knows the day or the hour. I just seem to think seriously that if some of uh, one of these uh, knuckleheads would guess the second coming right, God would just change it. He just go ahead and change it, maybe. Amen. Just so they didn't get it right. Hey, his coming is imminent. The rapture is. And uh, the Lord's return is a great incentive to working for him, for laboring for him, for evangelism. You know what? I want us to look here back at the text real quick. Acts chapter number one. Notice the question. Ye men of Galilee, verse number 11. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The question in essence was this. Why be stargazers instead of soul winners? We have a purpose. As we leave the second coming mountain, we have a purpose in our lives. And that is to try to win as many people to the Lord Jesus Christ as possible. You see, you and I can study the ten toes of Daniel. But if we fail to use the toes that we have to go out and tell others about Jesus, then we have failed. We can ride the wings of the angels in the book of Revelation. But if we fail to ride our car down the highways to tell the loss about Jesus, we've missed the whole purpose of eschatology. We need to be working for Jesus while we wait for him. Finally, Job, he said in Job, the 19th chapter, he said this wonderful sentence, passage, Job 19, verse 25. For I know, for I know, let's all say it together this morning. For I know, I know that my Redeemer liveth. And this is Old Testament. My Redeemer, Job already knew that the Redeemer in the types and pictures, in the preaching of the Old Testament. He already knew he, the Redeemer was going to go to the cross, die, be crucified, and redeem us. And he said that I know that my Redeemer liveth. He's seen the crucifixion, liveth. He's seen the resurrection. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. He's seen the consummation and he's seen the revelation where Christ comes back. I know these things. I know these things. He said, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. He's seen the resurrection, amen, whom I shall see for myself. There's some things twins should not share, amen. And I'm not going to share in that resurrection, amen. I want to see him for myself. I shared all growing up with him, amen. And mine eyes shall behold 
and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. I wrote something several years back, and I'll close with this. I entitled it, I wrote this one day, it's called I Know, based on this passage. And I'll leave it with this. There's no greater subject in all the pages of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, greater than the substitutionary death of Christ for sinners and His glorious resurrection. I am here to bear witness of my personal testimony of the glorious gospel of Christ. I know and do testify that over 2,000 years ago, God's love for humanity was shown in the giving of His only begotten Son. I know that there was a day when he was born of a virgin and he grew in stature and in wisdom and increased in the favor of God and of men. I know that he walked on the very earth that he created as the Son of God. I know that he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. I know that he raised the dead, healed the lame, gave sight to the blind, and did many mighty works that they could be written down. All the books in the world could not contain them. I know that he was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. He knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I know that he suffered many things of wicked men. He was spat upon, mocked, reviled, humiliated, scourged, beaten, despised, rejected, and nailed to a cross in his hands and feet after falling to his knees under the load of it. His side was pierced with a spear after hanging on the emblem of suffering and shame. I know that he suffered for my sins. He was bruised for my iniquities and the chastisement of my peace was upon him. I know he was buried to take my sins away. And if that isn't good enough to know, I know also and bear witness that he was resurrected bodily three days later and that death could not hold him. And I testify that he was risen and that he was seen of many witnesses over 500 at one time. And because he rose from the dead, I need not fear because he lives forevermore. I know that after his resurrection, he ascended to heaven and that this same Jesus I bear witness of is coming back very soon and he's not coming back to save the world but to judge it I bear witness that he loves sinners that he came to call them to repentance do you know do you know this Jesus that I know have you repented of your sin put your faith in what he did for you at the cross if not I exhort you to trust him today as your personal Savior. Father God in heaven, we come before you. We thank you for a second coming service today. As we have climbed this second coming mountain called Mount Olivet. And we get to see a person. He's the same as he's always has been. The same Jesus. And Lord, we're thankful for the promise that we hear that He's coming back as He has said. But God, we help each of us today to leave this place with a purpose. As we wait for You, will You help each of us to work for You? Will You help each of us to labor for You? To witness for You? To occupy till you come. God, I pray that now that you would convict our hearts, help us to make decisions right now that will not be the same till you come back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together and say, our eyes closed as they sing an invitation song. Two things I want to invite you today. Number one, if you're a Christian and you realize today, I need to get, I need to quit stargazing and get to soul winning. I need to have a burden for the Lord. Number two, if you're here to say this morning, you're lost without God. I want to invite you to come to Christ today. You've heard the gospel clear as a ringing bell across the country. Would you come? Brother Glidden. Number 401.
suppose I don't have to tell anybody you just sat underneath some Bible preaching and you, you preached under somebody has been in the book but you also listen to somebody that's been on their knees asking God to fill them with the spirit and uh, I remember preaching a, uh, a revival meeting for our brother here up up around St. Louis somewhere up in there before he went to Oklahoma and I knew that God was dealing with him and I, I'm going to be honest with you I hadn't heard him preach in years as far as I'm concerned one of the best messages on the second coming of Jesus Christ I've heard in a long long time and preached with unction and humility and power and I want to encourage all of you preachers get in that book learn your doctrine beg God for his power get lined out let her fly amen that's what we need uh, I, I don't know about you but that fired my soul up now i'm telling you and i'll tell you I, I just appreciate it and but i knew a long time ago that this boy was serious about preaching and was seeking the lord and studying and praying and then i watched as he went out there as that church called him and began to he took his whole church through a soul winning program trying to reach all their area and their community for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's that's what's going to make America great again, if it ever is. So, um, boy, I tell you what, it's been good this morning. Amen. Now, listen, I know they're having Farmer's Day out there, and that's great, and that's good, but we're having Father's Day in here, our Heavenly Father. And I, I'm so glad to be here. I want to thank all of you for coming this morning. Now, tonight, what we're going to do is let you, let you go home tonight we're going to have more testimonies our sister from australia is going to come and share a little bit with you by the way what did i do did somebody steal my hat you better not steal my australia hat i want you to look what god gave me right they they're so sweet and they gave me i'm the only guy in missouri i bet you's got one australia hat and uh there's more i'm going to tell i'll talk to you about tonight uh I didn't realize what God was doing over there in Australia through the ministry of the church here. And we're going to share a little bit of that with you tonight. Uh, I'm going to want Brother Ari to give a little testimony tonight. And then I'm going to ask somebody to pray about something tonight. I'm going to ask Jason and um, let's see, what was your wife's name, Jason? Becky? I'm going to ask you to pray this afternoon about giving a testimony tonight about God's grace in your life. So you'd be praying about that, okay, both of you together. And uh, appreciate that couple and uh, what God's doing in their life. And um, got a lot going on. I'm, I'm going to tell you a little something. The Holy Spirit's moving. A lot, there's stuff going on, and God's dealing with hearts and lives. Uh, Bradley, I, I don't want to puff you up, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I rejoice in seeing how God's pouring it on you. It's what we've got to have. And I want to commend you in the Lord. Not, not. I know that we are what we are by the grace of God. But boy, I'll just tell you something. If I've had anything in any influence on your life, it was a blessing to see. It's just a blessing to, to realize that you know, this boy's been in the book. He's been studying, getting himself. I mean, and he's getting the, making sure the powder and the lead and the and stuffs in the the primers in there, and. Uh, is good yeah, we got folks praying but we're just going to let you go it's 11 30 we're man we're ahead of time that's unusual for this church and uh, but tonight we'll come back and i don't i'm not all for sure what we're going to do we're going to have of course more preaching and singing the kids will probably come in here around 5 35 45 start singing maybe a quarter till six and then 6 six fifteen, and there we'll start preaching again and, and going Tomorrow's going to be a very, very special service as we have this sending service for our family here. And I want you to be here and come and be in prayer for the service that God would reach beyond their family into other lives and other hearts in sending people out. But boy, that message encouraged me to quit. You know, I mean, I have a tendency to want to say, I'm going to forget about this world. I'm just going to look up and wait for Jesus to come. But there are people who need the Lord. And man, that, I tell you what, that message set me on fire, boy. I mean, tell you what, I, was, I just almost jumped up, but I thought better not. It 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 might hinder the, the services, you know, and I don't want to do that. But I was about ready to take a lap, amen. I'll tell you what, I, how many's ever been in service where they took a lap? 
Oh, a few of you have. I've been in service. They took a laugh. Amen. I was preaching up here, but led them one time, and the more God got in that thing, and I never said, man, there's a running around that church. There's a running and hooping and hollering. And then they'd stop at the piano and sing a while, and then they'd run a while. And then somebody would get saved, and they'd all come to the altar, and then they'd run a while and sing a while. I'm telling you what, when the glory comes down, you don't have to wonder what's going on. But again, we're not manufactured. We're going to let God just keep them moving on. And, you know, people's different in their emotional makeups and all that and so forth. And that, that's, that's, I'm glad they are. I'm glad everybody ain't like me. It'd be a crazy world to live in. I'll guarantee you that. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's uh, have a word of prayer and to thank God for the morning that he's given us. Again, I want to thank the folks that fixed the dinner and, or the breakfast. Did you all fix dinner too? <laughs> no. <laughs> Lord, we thank you. Uh, for this day that you've given us to worship you this morning, to set apart a time, Lord, and take away from all the other stuff in life. And God, I want to thank you for the good messages we've heard today. It's been good, Lord. You've fed our souls and our spirits and our hearts. And God, we just pray that you'd help us to draw nigh to you. For Lord, you said if we'd draw nigh to you, that you'd draw nigh to us. I pray, Lord, help us to resist the devil and to know that when we do, he'll flee from us. I pray, God, that you'd help us, Lord, to just tonight, the service, I pray your special, Lord, the special work of the Holy Spirit will be in it. And God, help us to honor you and to glorify you in all that we're doing. Oh, God, keep moving behind the scenes. And then we pray that you'd burst out through surrendered lives in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.